The melting point sample should be just large enough so you can see it, and it should be tightly packed to ensure even heating. If you don't know what 2 millimeters looks like, take out a ruler and check. Before inserting the melting point tube into the melting point apparatus, check the thermometer to see that it has properly cooled from its last use. If the apparatus is hot, your sample might melt immediately upon insertion. If that happens, discard the melting point tube in the glass waste and prepare a new one. A melting point tube should never be reused, and a sample should never be melted more than once. Sometimes a sample may decompose before it melts, or it may melt with decomposition. Evidence of decomposition includes a darkening of the color or some other dramatic change, such as the evolution of a gas. Decomposition is noted with the letter D after the melting point temperature. If the recorded melting point of a pure solid does not match the literature value, there are several possible explanations. If the sample was heated too quickly, a time lag will exist, and the thermometer reading may not match the crystal temperature, giving a higher than expected melting point. Accurate melting points require slow heating. If any solvent is present, that will act as an impurity and have an effect on the recorded melting point range. If a solid has just been filtered, blot it with some filter paper and let it air dry as long as possible before taking the melting point. Most thermometers are not perfect, so each melting point apparatus should be periodically calibrated using pure substances with known accurate melting points. The resulting corrected melting point is more trustworthy. Finally, the identity of a solid can be determined if a known pure sample of that solid is available. By grinding together a one-to-one -one mixture of the known and unknown and taking the mixture's melting point, you can conclude the two compounds match if the mixed melting point matches the unknown melting point.